Yes, sir. We're officially back at it. This is Book Nice coming at you with the Marvel Legends Into the Spider-Verse movie Peter B. Parker figure review. Let's do it. This ain't for no scalper. You a scalper? Then fuck out shit. This one for them real collectors. That's army building and posing figures. Marvel Legends. Imports. Many mates the I'm fucking with. Heights beast we know about. You. Stay buying figs. And a quick look at the artwork on the side of the box. It is the same on the left and the right flap. Six figures in the wave. You'll need all six figures to complete the Stilt Man Builder figure. And a quick look at the front of the package. All right, let's bust this bad boy open and see what's what. All right, here we go. Peter B. Parker, AKA Spider-Man. His bio on the back of the package reads, Peter Parker mentors Miles Morales, an all new Spider-Man, to understand the importance of power and responsibility. Technically, this version of Spider-Man, the Peter B. Parker persona, was the only one that didn't have a direct comic book counterpart that they were based on for the movie. They definitely threw us for a loop with the Spider-Man that was killed early on in the movie being blonde, and that version being the typical kind of version of the adult Spider-Man, and then they gave us <laughs> Peter B. Parker, who a lot of uh, dads out there could aspire to, being that he had the dad bod and kind of aged out of the role and was sitting around sulking, eating pizza all day, and uh, upset about his divorce from Mary Jane. I actually kind of like those aspects though, of the movie. I thought that was a nice touch, and. and and definitely different from some of the things that we know about uh, Peter Parker and his origin story in the comic books. Now they did still keep some ideas and concepts that they drew on directly from the comics and that Peter B. Parker was sort of like a mentor to Miles in the movie just like the Peter Parker from the 616 universe was a mentor to Miles in the comic book after he came over into the 616 universe. This version of Peter Parker though the Peter B. Parker persona is from Earth TRN701. I don't know what TRN stands for. Somebody in the comments let me know. Peter B. Parker is packed in with the head to complete the Stilt Man Builder figure. Brand new sculpt and design for this figure. I don't think we've seen any of these parts before. He's rocking the fake Timberland on the right foot and what looks like it could be, I don't know, low top converse on the, uh, on the left foot. He's got the sweatpants. He's got the top of his Spider-Man uniform under the long sort of like army green jacket. I think we're going to see a lot of kit bash and a lot of people trying to use parts from this figure to customize sort of plain clothes looks for different characters. And I'm interested to see how they may actually reuse this mold again. And I think they did a really good job of matching the look of this figure as far as the head sculpt to the look of the character in the animated film. He has a very distinctive voice. I mean, the voice acting in this movie was just phenomenal. I said that since uh, the first review from the first figure from this wave and uh yeah i think this looks very unique pretty much spot on to the uh, movie design good job here a couple cool accessories packed in with peter b parker he's got this little soda cup this is uh reminiscent of i guess the scene where they were in the restaurant after their first encounter after his first encounter with miles and they were sitting down having a burger and soda and peter asked miles if he had money to pay for it this is a very cool accessory i'm i'm really digging the way legends has been not only giving us more sort of energy effects to represent the power sets of, of certain characters but a lot of accent pieces a lot of things that will be conducive to ACBA to display and this is a, a really nice touch and you can see that his right hand is open and cupped and basically sculpted to hold the cup perfectly and it looks like it's the same hand that we got with the retro carded Peter Parker figure if I'm not mistaken just the skin tones are a little different but yeah, you can see a blue ring around it and a yellow ring and the straw, and uh, I really like that. He's also packed in with an additional head sculpt that has his mask half on. And this is a look that I would like to see translate for some of the comic-based Spider-Man characters. We, we have had that once with Pizza Spidey with the smiling face, but the mask kind of fully over the top of his head. That's not something we have, but I'd like to see them try this with some of the comic-based Spider-Man. I do think this is a good scope. It looks good. Both head sculpts look spot on as far as the look of the character from the movie, and this was a nice touch. I know a lot of people still wanted the fully masked look, but uh, I'm assuming they have to save some things for the next movie uh, for the next couple of releases I, I think we'll definitely see more of this character with some of his different looks from the movie 
No additional sets of bare hands, but you can probably just swap on hands from other characters that we have that have white skin. Uh, I don't see a problem with that because uh, swapping these out seem to be about the same. I got to check the pegs though to be 100% sure. I'll, I'll grab a, another set of hands in a moment. But you do get a set of fisted gloved hands, which look good. They look like they're proportioned correctly. And you also get a set of whipping hands and again no issue swapping these out these look good as well and aside from that that's it in terms of accessories i suppose you could count the jacket as an accessory because you can remove the coat unfortunately you'll still have the sleeves of the coat as his arms like i said i could see a lot of kit bash potential a lot of people trying to reuse this jacket i could see this jacket on punisher <laughs> A lot of different people, maybe even a plain clothes uh, 616 Peter Parker. But as you can see here, he is still pretty well articulated. Yeah, it is a quick look at him without the jacket on so you can kind of see how the articulation scheme works. I actually thought there were butterfly joints. I don't know why I thought that, but no. Shoulders on a ball joint, upper bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, swivel and a hinge on the wrist. Like I said, I could see them reusing his body mold for another Peter B. Parker, swapping out the arms. You can see he's got the little gut there. He does actually shift pretty far back with that upper torso joint and forward. And then you actually get lower abdomen articulation or articulation at the waist as well. T-joint at the pelvis, upper thigh swivel, double jointed knees. Right above the ankle, you actually get rotation there and you do get a hinge and a pivot on the foot. Uh, one of my issues though is the neck, similar to Miles uh, Morales his neck it's very long the head can move independently of the neck but the neck does not move at all and uh, if the neck actually at least turned left to right that would give you a greater range and would actually make a little more sense for this elongated neck but you know the uh, animation design the styles of the animation was very unique so I guess they were kind of sticking to the script as far as that's concerned but pretty good articulation especially for somebody with a long like three-quarter inch coat and for the record, I did find one hand that could be swapped out here on the right hand. The battering here is just to show, I don't know, <laughs> that he can hold something in this other hand. Most Marvel Legends hands are not going to really pop into that joint, unfortunately, though. I tried Wonder Man's hands. I tried uh, Namor's hands. I tried, I don't know, a couple of other. I'm not even 100% sure where this particular hand came from. It looks like one of the sculpts that would go to one of the standard suited bodies. Uh, so it's got to be a peg that matches that basically so i only was able to swap out the right hand from this little small bin of hands that i have but obviously you can try your hand at this <laughs> and um and figure out what works but one of the suited body hands definitely works and there's a look at miles peter b parker and gwen stacy together all unmasked and they look very good together i do think maybe gwen is a little too tall or miles is a little too short i did see somebody comment on that and that they should be about the same height doesn't bother me too much but maybe when we get another set of looks for these characters they will correct that Oh, and I forgot about my man Spider-Ham. Here he is. But that's four out of the six crew members. Hopefully in the next wave, we will get Penny Parker and um, the Spider-Bot. And we will get Spider-Man Noir, which should be a really fun character design for Marvel Legends. Especially, you know, as far as this look goes. And here's a little bonus. I didn't show this in the past review, but these are the two Spider-Hams side by side. So the Into the Spider-Verse version on the left. And then you can see how the comic-based version differs on on the right like i did mention in the other review though the uh comic based version does have way more articulation too bad they didn't uh go that route with this guy but again like i said i think this is something that they're going to continue to explore so maybe on the next go around the next spider ham will be a little more articulated and if you want to have a laugh there's that that is the kid buck the ultimate spider-man that came i believe this is the one that came packed in with the ultimate vulture if i'm not mistaken this particular box because the uh, the blue, the colors on the costume were a little different. No, maybe this may be the regular release. I don't remember. Uh, maybe something will be popping up here. But I was able to uh, smash this head onto this body here. This is the alternate uh, Peter B. Parker head, obviously. You can see how small that head is, being that it could fit 
on this body and look properly proportioned, but that's uh, that's pretty funny. I did this just so you can see how a head sculpt with the mask on the top of the head may look. So this should be something that they should try across the board with every Spider-Man figure going forward. As far as I'm concerned, I think this looks pretty cool. And there's a quick look at the retro carded 616 Spider-Man and the retro carded Peter Parker next to Peter B. Parker. And uh, let me try one more thing. And obviously the head won't pop on there. You know, the peg for Peter B. Park is a little smaller. So the head is just kind of sitting up there. But, uh, but yeah, the proportions look okay. Kinda okay. Head's a little large, but you know, and Peter B. Park is obviously a little more slender with this look and looks like he's taller as well. All right, I'm gonna get up out of here. Pretty cool figure, definitely one I would recommend. You need him if you wanna complete the Stilt Man Builder figure. Up next is going to be Prowler. But, uh, but yeah, this is a really cool design. Great articulation scheme, especially considering the overcoat. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to more on this buck and see what else they can do and giving us the different designs for this particular character as well. So yeah, this, uh, this set is not officially out yet. This wave is not officially out yet. I know you've seen a few reviewers and stuff with the wave, but it's not slated to be out actually until January, 2021, which really means probably around Christmas time, it'll start showing up for most uh, collectors all right so thanks for hanging out as always rate comment and subscribe hit the bell down there and until next time peace stay out of my way i'm in the game i'm grinding i got the play 24 hours in the day seven days out the week i never sleep